Happening now, the Romney camp downplays another overseas gaffe. An aide curses out reporters. We'll tell you why officials in drought-stricken states may want to take a trip to Las Vegas. And spoiler alert, we'll show you some big Olympic moments before they air in prime time. Wolf Blitzer's off today. I'm Kate Baldwin. You're in the Situation Room. Romney is heading back to the United States from Poland right now, and his staff seems to be trying to ignore the critical reviews of the Republicans' overseas tour. The Romney camp is calling the trip a great success, despite several widely publicized embarrassments. The most recent happening earlier today when a frustrated Romney aide cursed at reporters. Our national political correspondent Jim Acosta has been traveling with Romney and has more. Kate, in the eyes of the Romney campaign, there were no mistakes made by the GOP contender on this overseas trip. Instead, his advisors say the world got to know a candidate who speaks from the heart. It's the image Mitt Romney has wanted voters to see for the last week. The GOP contender walking tall on the world stage, here visiting Poland's Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and later praising the former Soviet bloc country for escaping the Iron Curtain. I and my fellow Americans are inspired by the path of freedom, tread by the people of Poland. But on every leg of his trip, he and his campaign faced one controversy after another, from Romney's comments questioning London's readiness to host the Olympics to his remarks at a fundraiser in Israel, hinting that cultural differences might explain Palestinian poverty. Governor Romney, do you feel that your gaffes have overshadowed your foreign trip? So it's no surprise, while standing on a public plaza near the Tomb of the Unknown, reporters tried to ask Romney about some of the perceived gaffes on his trip. The candidate ignored the questions his press aide, Rick Gorka, did not. Show some respect We, we haven't had another chance to ask him questions. This is a holy sight for the Polish people. Show some respect. After Romney's speech in Poland, senior campaign advisor Stuart Stevens was asked if anything had gone wrong with the trip. Could this trip have gone more smoothly, do you think, just in general? It was a great success. The idea is that can people get a good sense of who he is? Can people listen and see, is this a person speaking from the heart? And he is. During a week-long trip to three countries, Romney took only three questions from his traveling press corps. The GOP contender did a series of sit-down interviews, including ones with CNN's Wolf Blitzer and Piers Morgan. Still, the Obama campaign slammed Romney as not ready for prime time, while the trip got a more sympathetic response from the White House. These are high-stakes enterprises that uh, pulling them off is a lot harder than it looks, that uh, they can be very tense especially if they're not going well. Signaling that it's turning the page, the Romney campaign unveiled a new smartphone app that will be used to announce the vice presidential pick in the coming weeks and a new ad on the economy. I know what it's like to hire people and to wonder whether you're going to be able to uh, make ends meet down the road. Romney never openly criticized the president on this overseas trip, but all of that is about to change as Romney arrives in the battleground state of Colorado later this week. Kate. Jim Acosta, thank you so much. Some members of Team Obama are taking some harder jabs at Romney. Probably no surprise. Senior advisor Robert Gibbs is calling the Republicans' foreign tour a quote-unquote embarrassing disaster. The president's aides are arguing that he, perf he performed much better when he made his debut on the world stage back in 2008. Let's bring in our White House correspondent, Brianna Killer, for more on this. Uh, shocker, the Obama campaign is having a field day with this one, right, Brianna? Yeah, shocker. I guess <laughs> not, right, Kate? But yeah, the Obama campaign and the White House are more than happy to draw the comparison here as they try to raise questions about whether Mitt Romney is prepared to lead on the international stage. In July 2008, then-Senator Barack Obama arrived in Afghanistan, the start of a whirlwind eight-day tour that also included Kuwait, Iraq, Jordan, Israel, France, Germany, and Great Britain. It was a high-stakes visit for a first-term senator with little foreign policy experience, who campaigned in part on winding down the war in Iraq. My goal is to 
no longer have U.S. troops engaged in combat operations in Iraq. The iconic image from that trip, a crowd in Berlin, estimated at 300,000 people, gathered to listen to Obama. Tonight I speak to you not as a candidate for president, but as a citizen. A proud citizen of the United States and a fellow citizen of the world. Quite a reception, though attracting an audience overseas isn't always helpful for a candidate trying to attract swing voters at home, and Republicans tried to capitalize on that. He's the biggest celebrity in the world. But is he ready to lead? Overall, though, the trip was a success, which is to say Obama returned to the U.S. with no damage done. Four years later, Mitt Romney can't say the same thing, and the Obama campaign is reveling in it, holding a conference call with reporters to highlight how Romney upset the British and the Palestinians on his trip. He both offended our closest ally and triggered, triggered a troubling reaction in the most sensitive region of the world. He certainly didn't prove to anyone that he passed the commander-in-chief test. Even the White House, which often punts questions about the political race over to the Obama campaign in Chicago, weighed in multiple times. Presidents, senators, congressmen, former governors need to be very mindful of the uh, impact because of the uh, diplomatic impl implications of uh, what... Uh, you know, what you say overseas. Ultimately, however, voters might just overlook Romney's gaffes in an election that's all about the domestic economy. The uh, voters this time around are much more likely to make their decision based on who will be a better uh, promoter of economic growth and, and job growth in this country than they are about uh, foreign affairs. The Obama campaign is also criticizing Romney for not visiting with troops as President Obama did on his 2008 trip when he went to war zones. The Romney campaign responds that Governor Romney, as governor and as a private citizen, has met with troops and with military leaders. And Kate, I will tell you, there was one misstep that President Obama had on his 2008 trip that his campaign is certainly not talking about, and that is that when he was in Germany, his campaign canceled a trip to Landstuhl Medical Center to meet with wounded troops. The campaign said they were afraid it would look like troops, based, essentially that troops were being exploited for a campaign stop, but Republicans pounced at the time, saying that it's never inappropriate to visit with troops. Yes, so no one is immune to this criticism That's when right. they are on the campaign trail, that is for sure. Great report. Thank you, Brianna. Thanks so much. Democrats and Republicans in Congress struck a deal today. No, I didn't misspeak. They did strike a deal today, and that should eliminate the threat of a government shutdown before the November election. Our senior congressional correspondent, Dana Beth, is on top of this. Dana, they seem to do it again. Another stopgap measure, huh? Uh, that's right. It's probably not a big surprise since it has happened so many times before. But let me tell you the two main reasons they did it. First, the fiscal year ends September 30th. That's a little more than a month before Election Day. And the politics of any government shutdown is really a jump ball. It's really unclear whether it would help, help Democrats or Republicans or neither. So both sides figured, you know what, it's better to just pass this uh, so-called continuing resolution, the stopgap me measure, to make sure that there is no question the government will not shut down. The second reason is everybody realizes that there's going to be a lot of work that Congress has to do after the election between November and the end of the year. That's when the so-called fiscal cliff is coming. That, of course, is when the Bush era tax cuts run out and uh, the, uh, the, the spending cuts are going to go into effect. And right there, I mean, you kind of hit it. I mean, this is a rare showing of bipartisanship, but on the big issues coming forward in the lame duck session, it's, there's no real indication this bipartisanship is going to reach into that, right? Uh, no, uh, definitely not. And all of that, I mean, the answer to that will really, really depend on what happens in the election. That will drive uh, which side uh, blinks, so to speak, and how the uh, the issue of tax cuts will really play out. But, but interestingly, you know, I think it's important to note, Kate, and you, as you well know, that this whole idea of making sure that the government is funded is pretty fundamental to Congress's role in the Constitution. I just want to show you a graphic because our producer, Alan Silverleaf, uh, found this information. I think it's fascinating. The last time Congress actually uh, didn't do this, pass a, a government uh, spending measure, was 15 years ago in 1997. Also, in the past 35 years, Congress and the president agreed uh, to a long-term budget only three times, Kate, only three times in 35 years, 1989, 1995, and 1997. So when Democrats have been in charge, Republicans have been in charge, 
both sides have fault for not doing, again, what is a really a fundamental job, and that is passing those uh, 12 or 13 appropriations or spending bills and sending them to the president to get funded. Yeah, excellent to have to remind them what their fundamental job is, <laughs> but we'll continue to cover it. Dana Bash on the Hill, thanks so much, Dana. With more than 60% of the country reeling from drought, local officials might want to get some tips from Las Vegas, where water has been scarce for more than a decade. And more Olympic records are broken. Stand by for a little spoiler alert. You can see the key moments before they air in prime time.